All right, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Got a lot of stuff to do, not a ton of time to do it, so we will typically start class on time, but um, you know, feel free to come in whenever. Just don't disrupt to make a scene, right? Um, there's a back door there as well, um, but coming in through this is just fine. So welcome to macroeconomics. So macroeconomics is uh, my favorite subject. Uh, it's really what kind of you know drove me into becoming an economist and getting my PhD in it. Um, I am your professor today. Uh, well, not today. For this eight weeks, right? Uh, today and many days to come. Uh, and we're going to be, you know, just going through the basics of macroeconomics. So how do we think about uh, production? How do we think about the goods and services that get produced, how do we think about the prices of those goods and services, uh, and the distribution, who gets those goods and services. So yeah, so macroeconomics is kind of everywhere. Um, you'll start to you know, see it more and more as you go through this class, uh, you know, news headlines and things like that probably will start to you know, become a little bit demystified, right? And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's it, it's an interesting but dry subject. Uh, some of you are going to take to it like a duck to water, and some of you are going to kind of struggle with it. I don't know why, um, but it's just some people have a knack for it, some people don't. Now, that being said, if you struggle with it, it's just going to take some extra effort and time uh, for you to get it, right? And, you know, that being said, um, I'm recording this right now, right? This is going to be posted to a YouTube channel. Uh, which also has all of the other presentations that I've done teaching this class over the last four years or whatever. Um, you'll probably want to stick to the more recent ones because those are the ones that are associated with our open source textbook. So we don't have to pay for a textbook in this class, which is great, right? So we save a little bit of money that way. Um, and we do all of our assignments through Canvas. So we do them all inside of here. So if you go into here, right, you saw that uh, announcement that I posted earlier today. Um, this is just kind of a blurb just telling you about uh, what's going on in the class. But let's go ahead and take a look at the syllabus, right? That's going to be the primary, you know, contract that is made between us. And that's going to be the thing that we're going to be, you know, referencing. So uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, my office is over there in the Berkheiser complex. I also am the center director for the Small Business Development Center. So I'm in one of the offices with a window. <laughs> um, Jennifer Whitrock is my uh, assistant. Uh, she's usually outside there. Um, so if you see somebody sitting in the corner, uh, you know, you can always just ask for me and either the office assistant or Jennifer will be able to uh, let you know when I'm going to be in or let you know to just send me an email. So for the most part, you're going to want to email me, right? So email is the best way to contact me. That's how you're going to get the quickest, uh, most comprehensive reply. You can pick up the phone and call. You can come in to office hours. And then the last thing you can do is you can make an appointment using this Calendly link. So you can go ahead and click on this and just make an appointment so we don't have to do that emailing back and forth like, oh, does 2 p.m. work? No. What about 1 p.m., right? So so that's, uh, that's the contact information section, right? <clears throat> so we're going to learn all about the economy, right? All about the goings on in the economy. So we're not going to drill down into any, you know, finite small parts, right? So essentially the way to think about economics is it's kind of like a lake or a pond, right? And, you know, microeconomists, so the other class that goes with this, right, is looking at the specific kind of organisms in that pond, right? So looking at like the algae and, and they're just seeing what's the health of the algae, right? Or looking at the fish and just seeing what's the health of the fish. Macroeconomics is taking a, a zoomed out perspective and is saying, well, how is the algae interacting with the water, which is interacting with the fish? You know, like what's the overall oxygenation level of the water given this diverse bio species that are inside of it? Um, how is the lake doing, you know, as there's more or less rainfall or whatever the case may be, right? So it's more generalized insights um, and more generalized questions about kind of what's happening 
uh, in the economy writ large, rather than more specifically, you know, what's happening to, you know, steel workers in Detroit or something like that, right? That's more of a microeconomic question. What's happening with workers, right, is a macroeconomic question. So we're zooming out. <clears throat> so you are going to, you know, understand a lot of, of different basic things after this, right? So national income accounting, um, why households and businesses do what they do, uh, what a market economy is, what are the implications of it, why is the government important, what does the government do? We're going to learn all these things in this course. We are in a face-to-face -face hybrid instructional modality, right? So what does this mean? Uh, this would be classified in other places as a reduced seat time class, right? So that just means that there's a there's a heavy expectation for you to do a lot of the lifting at home on your own, right? So there's going to be, you know, no small amount of reading of this open source text and perhaps watching videos that I've made in the past or uh, some videos that I will, you know, in a weekly announcement, I will kind of link to you some other resources to help to understand these uh, basic concepts. Um, I should get back to you within two days. Uh, if it's a weekend, it might take a little longer. If it's a break, again, it might take a little longer. Um, but um, if you don't hear back from me in that 48-hour response time, just kind of send it again. Just say, like, oh, here's a gentle nudge. You know what I mean? Just, hey, what's going on with this thing? And then I'll, I'll make sure to get back to you. Sometimes they just get lost. Uh, in addition to uh, the Small Business Development Center, I also do a lot of consulting um, right now a lot in the cryptocurrency uh, kind of industry sector uh, so needless to say I am um, probably too busy <laughs> also trying to do research at the same time right <clears throat> all right what about this course well we have reading quizzes which are simple and you have multiple attempts and it's the best score that gets uh, taken and so these really should be like pads to your grade. The reading quizzes should be pads to your grade, just kind of checks to see if you are, you know, reading the book and if you're coming to class. The in-class participation activities, um, these are, are graded a little differently. So this is a situation where if you get a 50% or higher in the in-class activity, then you'll get 100%. So as long as you get more than half of the questions right in the in-class quiz that I give you guys, right? You guys are familiar with cahoots. So we're going to be doing cahoots in this class as a way for attendance, but also to get these points. And then the nice thing is that uh, the top scores, so the two top scores every class get a get out of jail free card, which we'll go over in a second here. So this is just to make sure that you're actually trying on the quizzes rather than just sitting there jamming, you know, A over and over again, hoping... You know, I don't know, at that point, you're not hoping to get the top score, but you're just trying to get the attendance, right? So I'm just trying to avoid that situation because I do take these seriously, right? I take your guys' responses seriously. And if everybody or even, you know, a significant amount of people don't understand the concept or, or don't get a question right or a series of questions right, questions right, that tells me that you're not understanding the concept and I need to kind of back up and reteach it or provide you guys with additional resources or additional assessments on that, right? So it just kind of, it's a nice contemporaneous way for me to check in with you all um, very efficiently, right? <clears throat> We're going to have two exams. These exams will be in person. Um, they are going to have multiple choice and short answer questions as a way to get you more familiar with the short answer questions. What I'm going to do some class periods is I'm going to, instead of a Kahoot, I'll have you do like a graphing short answer exercise at the end of the class or maybe at the beginning of the class. Well, you know, depends, right? Um, so you'll just kind of tear off a piece of paper. Or I'll have some paper for you, for you all. And then you'll just do a graph and submit it. And then I'll return it to you the next class and, you know, with a little bit of comments on there to let you know, you know, how incorrect or correct it is, right? Um, one of the things that happens in this class is you sit there and you passively learn and you're like, oh yeah, totally makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. And then when you don't have the resources or like you don't have the exact 
question solved in front of you and you're asked to do that question, you're like, oh, I don't actually remember how to do this, right? So oftentimes students tend to have a really difficult time with the short answer section. And I think part of that is because there wasn't enough assessment going up into the short, into the exam. So we're gonna have, you know, on average, every other Kahoot is going to be a very simple, just kind of graphing exercise. Um, and then uh, for that, what I'll do instead of the 50% or not, like there'll still be a burden of like, did you get most of it right? You know what I mean? If you got most of it right, I'll correct it, give it to you, you'll get a check mark. If you did so poorly that it's not even like resembling <laughs> a supply and demand graph or a budget constraint or production possibility, whatever the, the thing is that I'm asking you to graph, then what I'll do is I'll put some feedback and then I'll say, please, you know, resubmit this to get the credit. So you can, I mean, honestly, it should just be like a two minute, come talk to me after class and be like, oh, what I do wrong? And I can teach you, you know, I can kind of correct you and then you can just fix it and turn it in right there, right? So just a little bit of a change in the class from the previous uh, times that I've I taught it just because I, I think we just need more of that physical practice of doing those graphs before we get to that exam situation. Does that make sense, everyone? So I'm not doing it to punish you. I'm not doing it because you know I love grading graphs or whatever, right? I just I've been noticing that students tend to fall behind in that area, and, and part of that has to do with the the infrequency of um, <clears throat> of using those skills, right? So uh, the the grading, sorry, let's go, we're gonna skip around a little bit. The grading is very uh, straightforward. 30% for each exam, 20% for attendance participation, 20% for the reading quizzes. And then the reading quizzes and the attendance have two drops. Any questions there, just on the breakdown, on the types of questions? The reading quizzes are multiple choice. The exams, like I said, are mostly multiple choice no more than 25% of the exam grade is going to be short answer, but more than 10%. Does that make sense? 10 to 25%. All right. <clears throat> this is the section that just explains the get out of jail free card, right? So you get one from, you know, participating in class well, right? If you have a really great insight and you have a really great example that you bring up in class, I may just give you a get out of jail free card right there on the spot. Um, you get them from scoring high on the Kahoot. You get them if you email me something that's interesting that I can use in class, right? If you email me some sort of interesting economic application, oh, this, is, this reminds me of what we were reading, or this reminds me what we talked about in class the other day, right? You can get extra credit from that. And then if you just meet with me and you win any game, you can get one get out of jail free card, only one maximum. So meet with me and we can go to the, you know, we can go play pool or ping pong, uh, we can play cards, we can do rock, paper, scissors, right? But just coming to my office hours or meeting with me, playing in a game and beating me in a game gets you one get out of jail free card. Um, I just really like games. It breaks down a lot of the weird tension that happens with these, with the student teacher role, you know what I mean? And it, it just makes, it just helps both of us become more approachable in each other's eye um, and kind of create some common ground at least, you know, like we both know how to play this game. We both play this game together. And then it's going to be more likely for you to ask me what you would think traditionally is a stupid question because we have a little bit of like a baseline, a little bit of a foundation. Does that make sense? So again, you don't have to do this. Um, you can only do it once. I had some student that was like, well, I want to do it. And I was like, well, you can't just get out of everything in the class by playing games, that just <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Um, but it's just one time, one time shot. Uh, and yeah, so they, they, can, they can be an extra drop for you in either of the two categories. So in either the homework category or the attendance category, get out of jail free cards are extra drops. Questions there? Okay. You know, I just, that's in there, but we don't do any writing, so we're not gonna worry about that. Um, late work policy, right? So uh, pretty lenient late work policy that I have, 10% for the first three days. After uh, that, it's 20%. And then after day six, it's 50%. So you can still turn stuff in till the end of the course, but it's gonna be half off, right? <clears throat> if you have exceptional you know, circumstances, please email me the sooner that you email me uh, the sooner that I can help make a plan for you to keep you on track, right? If uh, if you email me the last week 
and you say that you know all this stuff happened and you know can i can you make up everything and take the final exam you know like it's that's that's a much taller order than when things hit the fan to email me and say, hey, this is happening. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, you know, or I've already gotten a little bit behind on my assignments. Um, you know, what kind of policy could we work out uh, or what kind of schedule could we work out so that I can get these things done and not, again, not wait, because that's not a fun experience for you all. You know what I mean? Like the whole panicking and the whole like trying to learn 13 chapters in like three days. Like nobody, I don't want you to do that. I don't think you really want to do that. So as situations develop, Communicate with me. It's kind of the long and short of that. All right. <clears throat> um, do, do, do. No cheating. Be civil. Uh, yeah, just let me know. Use the resources on campus. It's accreditation stuff that you guys don't care about. Uh, the schedule. So if I were you, you know, in, if you're going to print out anything in this course, right, I would probably just print out the first and last page of the syllabus, right? The first page has the contact information of my office hours. The last page has our schedule. So this is our schedule. Everything's due Monday night, right? Sunday night kind of sucks, kind of ruins the whole weekend. So I have everything due on Monday night. Tells us when our exams are, Monday of week five, and the Friday of week eight. Questions on syllabus stuff. I've been iterating on it for a while now, as you guys can tell. So it's pretty, it's pretty comprehensive. But if any questions do arise, please feel free to email me. If you have a question about this, odds are five other students has a question and they're just not emailing you. So if you have a question about it, please um, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. Jan? Question. Cool. Awesome. <clears throat> okay.